John here guys and today we're gonna be comparing shark bite to DJI to analog ever since I put out that first video on shark bite that's up on the channel about the Scout HD people have been asking me how does the actual image compare between these systems for the shark bite system we're gonna be having the digi sites two for dji we're going to be having the nebula pro that i have you can't get it but it is the best camera on the analog side we're going to be comparing the best racing camera option and that is of course the predator v5 camera for dji i'm going to be flying the apex four inch that you guys have seen on the channel for shark bite i'm going to be using this prototype armor tan tadpole hd with the digisite 2 camera this build comes out really nice so which one of these two do you think is going to have the best image i'm going to be just flying one of my racing builds that has the predator v5 nano in it the best camera that you can get for analog a lot of people are going to say the custom camera option of an m12 lens attached on the run cam camera is better than the digisite v2 but this is the best camera you can actually buy i don't want to have to cobble something together i'm just not gonna maybe i'll do that later it's also notable that the hd zero camera for shark bite is going to be coming out very soon and that is also going to be very very good now picking the order to show these technologies was like picking the order to watch the star wars movies and it was so difficult there's a lot of factors i'm just gonna go in the order that the technology was released so we'll have analog up first, then DJI, then shark bite. It's easy to look at the footage after the fact, but actually flying it back to back to back. Let's see what I notice as I'm checking it out. Analog with the Predator, let's check it out. Okay, so on a nice sunny day, analog actually looks pretty nice. So let's kind of try to follow the same path here. I mean, see, the light handling is not perfect, but I can actually see pretty well. A nice sunny day like this is really nice to compare because we want to see how these cameras and these camera systems handle the transition from sun to shade, back to sun. And that's one of the shortcomings of analog. Okay, here we go with DJI. This is 50 megabit mode. Uh, with low latency mode turned on, let's try to do the same kind of thing. Automatically, I can see so much more detail. I can see the individual little blades of grass. The transition from dark to light is so much nicer. Uh, let's see in these quick areas. Does the latency bother me? It does not. I can actually see that little sign um, that I would be in danger of hitting with this. Whoa. Oh, there's somebody riding a bike by. Uh, that's a little crazy. Uh, one thing I can notice is that just the goggles being on my face are much less comfortable on the DJI goggles. That is one downside. They're easily the least comfortable goggles just because of the weight primarily. But as you can see, like I'm making these moves that are very time sensitive. The latency is not bothering me. Here we go with shark bite. Uh, my first impression is it really does look a lot more like analog than DJI. I mean, it's like the colors are definitely better than analog. And there's like some breakup right there already. I can see a lot of those small details less. The color rendition is very, very good. That's probably almost as good as DJI. I mean, the latency feels good. At these speeds, like I cannot feel the latency difference at all. Like a lot of people talk about the DJI supposedly variable latency. And if you, but if you have your settings correctly, which um, you want to never go to high quality unless you're just like going very, very slow. You want to be on low latency mode, focus mode off. Then the latency will be very consistent and I can't feel it. Um, 
um, at my speeds. Like I last year, I was ranked 255 globally on the uh, global racing leaderboards for MultiGP. So that does not put me as like the very very top, but uh, it's probably in the top 20 25 percent of all racers worldwide. Okay, so I do feel like Sharkbite is a lot closer to a good analog camera than a good DJI camera. Sorry guys. Uh, I mean a lot of people that have described it as analog plus that actually sounds very accurate it just feels like sort of a slightly enhanced analog overall shark bite is nice but it's like the things are so clunky you have the 20 by 20 that's as long as a banquet dinner table or you have the woot board that is a little awkward for a lot of builds yeah see okay so you can actually see a lot more detail uh, in some of those bushes like if i fly next to this ridge i can see those little branches sticking up it's like i could never upload this for for anything and and like have people mistake it for an action camera if you actually spend a little time color grading the dji footage people will ask you like oh what camera is that is that a gopro is that you know and you crop it the right way um no one is mistaking this for an action camera and people are like oh well why do you compare them well compare them because dji for a premium set of goggles with analog included is much cheaper uh, the per quad cost is actually pretty similar you're looking at about 160 170 bucks by the time you add an antenna which is right about the same exact cost per quad as dji so if they cost the same if they're both a little awkward to use because of weight or size or whatever the goggle cost is not much different the latency is not really an issue unless you're like a top 100 racer if it is then you're either flying at the very limits of range of the system which you shouldn't be doing anyway or you have your settings set up incorrectly if i could have this image in a four by three picture with this color would i pay a little bit more if i could have it the same size as a tbs pro 32 nano um yeah i'd pay gladly it does look nice it is better than analog but it's just it's so far from dji